Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333. And this last match is going to be between Briley, Savasmi, and Lamadeus against Jummy, Shirka, and 2 plus 2 is 5 on Avalanche. Once again, a request. Actually, during the stream. But the other requests. This is the last match I'm going to do tonight, so other requests will be on Tuesday if I do them. I should point out that requests are done at my discretion, so it's. I like the requests. I generally do requests. It is at my discretion, though. So if you don't see yours, sorry. But I didn't do it. I probably will, though. Anyway, starting out, we have Jummy going for jump bots, 2 plus 2 is 5 going for the light vehicle factory, and Shirka going for also light vehicle factory, so double light vehicles, while Savasmi goes for spiders, Lamadeus goes for light vehicles, and Briley goes for cloakies. And as it is, starting out with a basically a slash push coming out from 2 plus 2 is 5. Well, Jummy and Shirka, it looks like they're just helping out with the economy. And I'm not sure why Shirka went for light vehicles as well. Clearly, it's not actually doing anything. But they have it, I guess. At the same time, though, Hermit Rush from Savage Me looks like he's going down the southern side of the map. Savage Me looks to be just focusing on the southern side of the map very heavily. While Lamadeus trying to fight the Slash War, but not winning at the moment. They're going to have to run away, so the mid ground is... The mid lane is pretty effectively the southeast teams. Just about belongs to them completely. At this point, though, southeast is really tearing things apart here. Finally going to lose a unit. It took a while for that to happen, but... Yeah, Lamadeus, pretty much the only person actually focused on mid right now, because, I mean, the flea's coming down here to scout out for the hermits from... Savitz me over to the south side of the map, trying to break through that way. I don't know if that's going to work. Lamadeus had some nice positioning on those slashers, managing to break the lines, force 2 plus 2 is 5 a little bit further back, but they, 2 plus 2 is 5, they accomplished their goal. And they got some reclaim as well, which is a really nice benefit. So they got reclaim, they got a nice position in the middle of the map. The north side of the map is being somewhat taken by Briley. But really, it's the south side of the map that's somewhat actually now threatened. Savage Me was going for it. Still is, though. Still have their hermits going forward. I'm going to see if they can get a commander kill, possibly. But Jummy is on there. They aren't going to let that happen easily. And Jummy, however, the commander is getting under some attack. But these hermits are basically just committing suicide. Like, the defender is coming in here and the pyro to finish them off. So there's not much these hermits are going to be able to do. Except kill a pyro. They actually are able to do that. But still... Still, the retreat is forced, but the pressure has been put. I mean, the southeast, they still have the pressure from the hermits. They are going to lose one of them, eventually. But, yeah, this is not working out well. Lamade is already throwing in the towel. They've lost their main... Oh, wow, they lost their commander already. I missed that, I'm sorry. But, lost their commander already. Able to force back a little bit from the southeast, but... Yeah, resign vote coming in already, three minutes into the game. So, a very strong rush coming in from the southeast side. Well, Savitz Me still focuses on the south side, and that's the thing I think is actually going to make them have a chance in this game. I mean, yes, mid lane is really important, and on Avalanche, it is really important. Because if that gets forced through, you're done. But, the south side of the map, that's a lot of money. Like, that's 10 or 12 metal in this one little valley, on top of the two metal over here, in the western side of that valley. And the center of the map just doesn't have anywhere near the economy. So if the south side can be held, which is tricky, because this is Bob Hathamal. So the jump, I mean, jump bots, of course, can just avoid that anyway. But it is Bob Hathamal regardless, so you can actually just have units walk down the hill. Well, it's Bob Hathamal in a few select places. But the point is that you still have jump bots. So it is possible for a pirate to get down there and mess up what's going on. Still, that is a strong position to have. If that can be held, it's obviously money, but it's also a good staging ground. And that's not well defended right now. Like, there's there's a Stardust coming in. That's the... No, there aren't. That's just a Defender. Never mind. There's a Defender. That's it. There's actually quite a bit of pressure coming from the south right now. So Savitz Me had a pretty big, bit of a good idea here, and Briley's also managing to retake the center with a few Warriors tearing apart all the Slashers, possibly killing the Firewalker as well. That Firewalker goes down. That's going to be a huge blow to the southeast side. And the Firewalker doing what it can to run away, but it's not going to be able to. There's nothing in the back to save, and the Firewalker goes down. 
Northwest side retakes the center quite hard, by the way. And with an economic advantage, this could push back to a win. The moderator is doing what it can to stay alive, or to keep the team alive. But unfortunately, it went a bit too far forward, so that's... That's not going to work. And wow, Lama Deus casting shade on the enemy team. I mean, okay, I'll realize I don't know a lot of these names either. We saw two plus two is five in a team game last time, but yeah, this is actually everybody but Lama Deus who's doing all the fight here. So, I don't know. I don't honestly know these players extremely well, but we have seen a few of these in previous games, and yeah, I'd say that Lama Deus, while definitely the best player in the match, and they're not doing anything right now, except for one slasher, but they don't have much of the economy production, and they aren't doing much overall militarily. It is mostly just Briley, actually. Southeast. Southeast not wanting to resign. Okay, interesting. I don't expect they will yet. And at this point, only one player wants to resign. It looks like Shirka is the only one who actually has given up so far. Given up all hope as, yeah, the game has kind of turned around. I mean, I say that, and of course, we just saw the game turn around in favor of Northwest from Southeast. But now it does not appear that that is the way that they expect things to go. At least 2 plus 2 is 5 has faith that something can be wrestled out of this. And how do I... Okay, let's put this in a position where it's a bit easier to see for players, for the viewers. So for the viewers at home, this is the resign poll. And the resign poll is currently at a stalemate. It is entirely up to Jummy whether or not they should surrender. So Jummy seems pretty confident. They do have the moderators up that that's basically the, the defense they need. And of course, with the Scorchers coming through, that the Fleas won't survive very long. So once the Fleas get torn apart there, there might be some confidence that there's actually a way out of this. The one thing is, there's not a whole lot of defenses up from the northwest side. They did a massive push, but they didn't actually manage to win off that push. And because of that, there's not a whole lot that they can do. Because if you look at the push here, there's like, oh, I see. There's not a whole lot that the push will actually accomplish, given that Southeast didn't lose much of their economy. They lost some of their military, lost none of their production, and I don't think even lost any of their commanders. I could be wrong. I don't see 2 plus 2 is 5's commander anywhere around here. That one's probably dead. But... The others are still alive. Actually, yeah, I think I... I seriously suspect that 2 plus 2 is 5 has lost a commander. However, <clears throat> despite that one loss of commander, and that is an evening up loss of commander as well, this is actually quite advantageous, or at least quite even. The problem is the economy, of course. Northwest still has an economic advantage. They are getting a lot of reclaim. Actually, both sides are, and even then. This is what I was talking about with the south side of the map. The south side of the map is huge. That is a big reason why Northwest is in such a commanding position. They aren't anywhere near finished. But this is still... This is still their lead. Not only that, they've also killed more medals, so... Overall, Northwest is in a very strong position. They aren't in a position, I'd say, as strong enough to push and win. But give it a couple minutes. They will be. Unless the South gets raided. If the South gets torn apart, then there's a possibility. That could actually work out. But as it is, it's a pretty faint possibility as not much is going on there. Instead, 2 plus 2 is 5 focusing on the north side. Looks like they're trying to open a path into the north and getting some resistance from Lamadeus. Quite a bit of it, actually. Going to lose all their forces in the process. They might be able to take out Lamadeus' forces if they micro properly. They did get rid of the metal extractors, which is something, but all of the reclaim is inside of the northwest team's territory, so northwest team can take that easily. And 2 plus 2 is 5 did manage to deal some damage. Did manage to escape with a few units, but yeah, the reclaim has already been set. Like, there's already a mason going up here. Actually, yeah, there's already one mason going up here to take all this thousand metal worth of reclaim. I mean, much of it has been broken by Briley's forces here, having walked over and smashed up the corpses, but it's still a lot of metal. And the Scorch is coming in here, getting torn apart by the warriors. Did a fine job against the Rockos, but that's because they counter Rockos, because Raiders generally counter Skirmishers. At the same time, though, the center of the map is still under control of the Southeast team, and they are getting a lot of reclaim out of it, but that reclaim has just dried up, so this is probably when they're going to attack, just because they kind of need to. And indeed, the Scorchers are coming over to the northern side of the middle lane. 
It's about the only place they can actually attack effectively. There's a lot of masons over here. The masons won't be able to build this up in time, but the Scorch is coming from Lamadeus. We'll be able to stop most of the mason destruction. One of the masons going down is a small price to pay to maintain a line. And, of course, to get more reclaim as well. So ultimately, that mason will have more or less paid for itself. Shirka, however, going for the sumo on top of this, and the sumo is going to be possibly a way of getting into the southwest. I don't think so. I think the entire focus for the southeast team is take out the center lane. Take everything out here, go through there, and that's it. Once that's done, I think that... I think that it might help, but really, that southwest is huge. Northwest would not have the lead they're in. Would not be in the position they're in if the southwest wasn't there. That's kind of the problem. And it looks like, oh. 2 plus 2 is 5 appears to have surrendered completely, or just left. Bit of a shame. But, bit of a 2v3 situation now. However, I can kind of see why they did that. The sumo is kind of the only hope right now. I mean, look at all these forces here. The slasher's on top of the the Warriors and Rockos. They can deal with the Sumo, no problem. Like, this is kind of the counter composition. Except the Warriors. The Warriors aren't great, but the Slashes are fine. The Rockos are fine. The Slashes are, of course, going to get torn apart. I mean, to some extent, Sumo is going to do his job. But yeah, Skirmishers are basically... Skirmishers and Artillery, that's basically the way to go when you're dealing with Sumo. So, I don't think that's a bad way of going about it. Of course, at the same time, all of Bradley's forces coming around the back with no defenses there should actually be able to wreck everything in the southeast. At the same time, Sav is me flanking with static defenses, well, not really flanking, but with static defenses preventing any retreat to the southwest. So the southeast base is essentially completely under fire. It's in jeopardy. And the center lane is falling apart as well. The sumo is about the only thing keeping it in any way decent shape. And while some damage is able to be dealt, the Sumo does need to have some kind of support, like Moderators. Moderators help. That's a great piece of support. But even then, the main base is being torn apart. These Warriors are doing a wonderful job. Having gone through the top side, Shirka just doesn't feel there's any way to go. I don't know if we're going to see anything out of Jummy to surrender as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if Shirka just left and left everything to Jummy. Doesn't appear to be happening, though. Shirka actually is going to lose everything in the process, so we don't see much. Actually, that's exact. No, that's not what happened. Shirka's still here. And Jummy's at the front. Jummy's still pretty confident from the, from the looks of it that they can deal with this entire force using the sumo, but nothing is dealing with the south side of the map. The southwest side of the map with all of this, like... There's eight... There's 16 metal income... Oh, 29 metal income with all the overdrive because of all the geoplants. Like... That is half of the metal advantage. And for a lot of the map or a lot of the match, that has been the whole metal advantage has been that 30 metal income from the southwest side of the map. That's what I mean. All that overdrive is immensely useful. And because of that, Northwest has been able to just maintain this massive military advantage. Even with relatively even parity attrition. It's actually been fairly close fight-wise. Like, Southeast has not lost that much more metal than Northwest. But Northwest has had a 30 to 50 metal per second advantage this entire game and has used all of it. So, no wonder it's been going this way. I'm actually quite impressed that Southeast has held on as long as they have with the military disadvantage and the economic disadvantage that they've had for pretty much the entire game. I mean, that is some good stuff. The sumo is helpful, and I think when the sumo dies... We are going to see a surrender coming out from the Southeast team. I don't think Jummy has any other plan other than sumo and hope for the best. I don't see anything else. I, there's nothing coming out of the factory other than moderators, which is basically support for the sumo. And Shirka going for the gunship plant, seeing what they can do. They might go for a few rapiers or banshees. Not really sure that either are going to be that effective with the slashers in play, though. Like, the one thing is these... Like, the sumo, I'm guessing, is going to probably jump on top of the slashers, and maybe that'll help. I mean, clearly, trying to pull the slashers out of position. It's a good idea. Still, there's only a few moderators behind them, not enough to really make that work, and, like we said, with the main base being completely torn apart, there's not much Southeast has production-wise to deal with this either, but, man, tearing apart the lines is still working out nicely. 
still opening things up, and Jummy's got the repairs going on the sumo quite hard, as well as so many constructors that this actually is a massive reclaim field. Well, 1200 metal is not, not that massive. But still, that's 20 metal. Oops. Like 20 metal, or 30 metal, like 30 build power with 1200 metal. That's still 40 seconds worth of almost economic parity. That's only 20 metal per second behind. Like, this is how desperate the situation is, that that is still a decent thing for the Southeast team. Because the Northwest team otherwise has this, and the Banshees are coming in. Don't know that I agree with that, but admittedly, the Sumo was doing a fine job getting rid of the Slashers until it died, and I think this is where Jummy throws in the towel. Yes, it is indeed Jummy. Pole resigning. They lost their only hope, and with that, they lost the game. But yeah, metal income-wise, Northwest just maintaining a commanding lead the entire game. Southeast had a bit of an even setup at the start, but not much. And in terms of metal used and produced, it was... Yeah, Northwest had a massive advantage. I mean, Northwest managed to keep the units their army relatively large, but yeah, after a while it didn't even work out for that either. Like, Northwest just had a commanding lead. Like, once... When Lamedes' commander died, it was a bit of a problem, but there wasn't much besides the south side... Sorry, the center. The south side was entirely in the Northwest command. The center lane was the only thing that the southeast side had briefly, and then it broke through because the northwest side had all of this metal. Actually, not even this much metal, but still had the metal extractors, and that was their entire focus. So... That's the way Avalanche often goes. These South Metal Extractors are really important. If you can hold them, you've pretty much got the game. A center is handy as a short path, but that's about it. Although that actually is a really useful thing to bear in mind, so I can see why that was the focus. It's just, you need that money. And that money did the thing. That was the trick. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. And like I said, if you want to request games, well... I have all these things you could use to actually contact me and say, hey, I want to request games. That'll be on screen. So, thank you for watching, and I'm probably going to be doing more on Tuesday, I would imagine, because there's a bunch of games that I wouldn't mind casting, but I don't really feel like casting right now. So, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.